folks, welcome back to Modern Horror, and a huge hello and welcome to all the new subscribers. I could not have picked a worse time to move for you guys. Anyway, this is not the official 2018 comeback tour just yet, but I wanted to do this review for everyone because the latest Hellraiser movie, Judgment, is ready to come direct-to-video and streaming just in time for Valentine's Day because... Hellraiser's what you mean, right? Now, Hellraiser is one of those franchises that'll never truly die. I mean, the first three or four movies have a, a special place in the pantheon of classic horror, and the next four direct-to-video releases are... movies. Anyway, if you're just looking for a quick yes or no verdict on this movie, no, probably not. I mean, unless you're a huge fan of weird shit and gore, you know, if you like the uh, the aesthetic of, uh, you know, like horror anime with a nice helping of Hieronymus Bosch, if that's the sort of thing that you're into, go nuts. But if you're a Hellraiser fan from the first few movies, and even the sequels, this is, might leave you a little bit confused, and if you're a more moderate horror fan, this sort of flick might be a little bit too out there. Now, it's not, it's not torture porn, but it's in that same vein of... The disgust that you feel is the point. First, a bit of background. After the sequels hit peak Pinhead in 2005, when both Deader and Hellworld were released like two months apart, the studio decided that maybe they should cut back a titch on the uh, exquisite suffering and whatnot, but as I understand it, Dimension is under contract to make a Hellraiser movie every few years, or else they lose the rights. So, they released the utter turd that was Revelations in 2011 and managed to hold off for about seven years before the Living Judgment. Thematically, this draws a lot on the heavily Judeo-Christian influences that started showing up in Hellraiser 3, but got really played up in some of the sequels. Now, ironically, despite having Hell in the name, Hellraiser was originally pretty agnostic, I and mean, even the Labyrinth from Hellraiser 2 was much more eldritch than uh, straight Hell. But Judgment is very concerned with the Sin and Punishment game and how the internet has rendered the sort of hedonism offered by the puzzle box more or less obsolete. Obsolete. Irrelevant in an age when desire has become amplified, but where lust can be sated electronically. Now, as far as the actual story events go, Judgment borrows a lot from sequels Inferno and Hellseeker, and also a fair amount from Seven as well. Obviously, it's framed differently and includes a fair amount of its own elements, but the broad strokes felt very lifted from those sources. However, despite having some story elements that remind me a lot of those other movies, Judgment's visual inspiration definitely isn't Hellraiser. It's sort of like a cross between uh, Guillermo del Toro and Eli Roth filtered through Hieronymus Bosch again, or, or The Cell or something. It's definitely admirable for a series that's over 30 years old at this point, basically producing an Ashcan copy for legal reasons to, to go on such a limb and just let the artists and designers just go nuts and actually trusting the writer when they put some of these bizarre rituals on the page. That said... I'm a little torn on it because it is just so incredibly gross and it just doesn't justify itself beyond the rule of cool. Plus, by distancing itself so far from the rest of the series, it ironically feels like another unrelated script with Pinhead just sort of shoehorned in there, when it's actually one of the only sequels that has been written from the get-go to be a Hellraiser movie. I've tried to be vague so far, but from here on out are spoilers, so if you don't want any of that, thank you so much for watching this far, but now is your time to close the tab. But if you'd like to be updated about future videos, please make sure to subscribe before you head out. Now, the movie itself has two main plots. One is a, a cop drama focusing on two detectives who happen to be literal brothers and their new partner tracking a killer calling himself the Perceptor who is killing mild to moderate breakers of the Ten Commandments in ironic ways. Chasing a suspect leads them to a victim of the other plot. The internet has made depravities previously unavailable commonplace to the point that horrible perverts just hop on Craigslist or Pornhub instead of traveling to third world taverns to trade mysterious strangers for Le Marchand's box. Now, in the face of obsolescence, Pinhead and his buddy the Auditor need to employ a vastly overcomplicated procedure to torture the worst sinners of the worst. Here's their new system. They lure victims to a specific house and hook them up to a typewriter where the auditor types up their sins using their own boys' the ink. 
Once that's done, a fat dude called the Assessor comes in and eats the pages after seizing them with the tears of children. He then pukes all that up through a tube into a trough where three naked ladies with skinned faces called the jury stick their hands into the goo and declare a verdict. They move the victim to a table where more naked ladies look them clean and force feed them some sort of goop as a further cleanse, and then a massively obese guy with a, a weird tiny wooden baby mask comes in and then a tiny dude in a gimp suit and gas mask and butcher's apron jumps off his back, slices up the victim, and peels the skin off. The jury comes back where the victim's blood is sprayed all over the boobs. Holy shit! At some point in this whole plot, one of the detectives makes it to the house and is found to be so ultimately evil that he can only be judged by God himself. So an actual archangel, Jophiel, personally intervenes to prevent Pinhead from judging him. Uh, the writers at least did their research. Jophiel means Watchman of God and is the Archangel of uh, Judgment. Now, surprisingly absolutely no one, it turns out that that detective is the preceptor who snapped after realizing his wife started cheating on him with his brother just weeks after he shipped off to Iraq. So he orchestrated this entire killing spree and their final confrontation to offer Pinhead their souls in exchange for his. Jophiel demands he goes free, and he is told to continue his work in God's name, but gets shot by the third detective like 10 seconds later, so yeah, you know, so much for that. And then in the last, like, five incredibly confusing minutes, Jophiel gets pissed at Pinhead for setting off the guy's death, so Pinhead chains Jophiel to death, and God punishes him by making him mortal. Now, this movie managed to mostly hold it down on the, uh, the reference party, but the final dialogue between Jophiel and Pinhead devolves into just awkward references, like uh, just saying Jesus wept and then a riff on the, the I am the way thing from, uh, I think, Hellraiser 3. The whole mortal Pinhead thing also has a big Hellraiser 2 and 3 vibe, which just kind of cheapens the whole ordeal. As far as the acting goes, Paul T. Taylor's performance as Pinhead is pretty decent. Uh, you know, he'll never be Doug Bradley but he captures much more of the quiet dignity of the character than Stephen Smith Collins did in Revelations. Now, the auditor, played by director uh, Gary Tunnicliffe, is actually a pretty cool character. The dialogue he gets uh, bantering with the victims is very fun. He's got good presence. Now, I'm not sure if this counts, but he is hilarious in the outtakes on the Blu-ray. The rest of the acting is uh, overall isn't phenomenal, but it's much more capable than anything in Revelations. I like the extended mythos. Uh, I thought the bits of world building and implication of factions and politics in Hell was one of the more redeeming qualities of Bloodline. So many of the sequels just made it seem like Pinhead was the only one here that actually mattered, so having other characters on the table is kind of a welcome change. But I don't like that the way that they've done it cements the Cenobites as simple devils just punishing the wicked. Their original nature is just kind of you know, intergalactic BDSM monks was far more interesting to me, although it doesn't lend itself to uh, extensibility like they've done here. They, uh, they took a chance here, and that's worth something. Unfortunately, I just don't think that what they did right was enough to prop up a pretty uninteresting plot or justify the gore, vomit, gratuitous, nudity, bizarre procedures, and disgusting rituals. Anyway... Thank you all for checking out some modern horror and this quick look at the latest entry in the venerable Hellraiser franchise. If you'd like to be notified of new videos on this channel, please subscribe and check the notification bell. We'll be back with a full review soon, but until then, cheers folks, I've got such sights to show you.